All right, David, we followed a lot of the in-depth reporting that Bridge has done on the Flint water crisis over the last year and a half or so, but mm -hmm. give readers an idea of what they can expect now from this book, Poison on Tap. Is it just a collection of everything that's been written? It, it's a collection of everything that's been written, but it, it really paints a, 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 a much better fuller portrait of uh, all the government uh, mismanagement that's that's gone on over you know more than a year uh, and it also goes a little bit beyond that because it, it paints a portrait as well of the many heroes and and uh, you know who came together and refused to accept the word that everything was fine and it tells their stories as well. The entire staff contributed to this chastity and um, what were some of the things that stood out for you in terms of what needed to be inside this book to give people more context? It's really a reference material kind of book where you look at it in a chronological way. It has a timeline from even before the switch over and up until almost to date, we're going to be updating it as well. Uh, anyone who wants to know, okay, what happened in March of 2015, th it's there. Who, who wants to, anyone who wants to know, okay, so tell me, I want to know more about Mona Hanna Atisha or really what was Mark Edwards and how was he involved? It, it tells the chronological story in one place and people don't have to Google all over, you know, America to find out, okay, how did this really transpire? It's all in one book now. You know, and that's what I think is so great about it. And one of the things that caught me about Bridges' coverage um, during this entire process was the timeline. Mm -hmm. that you guys sat down and were able to start to really give detail and attribution to where all of the detail was coming from all in one place. How important or how, I guess, time consuming was that, David, in terms of putting that timeline together even before it got into the uh, book? Uh, yeah, it was incredibly uh, time consuming, but that's really our niche, was, which is to pr provide uh, data-driven, evidence-based uh, journalism. And, uh, you know, this, like so many issues, it becomes sort of a political football. You know, on the one hand, you have folks say, well, this is what happens when you have democratically controlled cities. On the other hand, there are some people who think Governor Snyder woke up one morning and decided to poison Flint's children, you know? And, and, and there's a crazy stuff on both sides. And this really provides a really full, comprehensive context and a great research tool, as Chastity said, to really get at, uh, you know, all the different layers of mismanagement here. You know, I think it's interesting that you bring up the, the political debate and the politics of it all, Chastity. People say, oh, so does this come from a certain lean? Because you say, and the heroes that help the city. How would you kind of characterize the tone of this book? Um, I think it's, it's it's just the facts. I mean, the fact of the matter is, if the people of Flint didn't stand up and demand answers, this wouldn't have happened. So yes, it's factually, these people are heroes. Is that opinion? Is that leaning? Some people would say yes, but I would say no. If um, Mark Edwards and Mona Hanatisha and Leanne Walters and Melissa Mays and uh, the, the, the Dem D Democratic Defense League in Flint hadn't st stood up, this would not have been exposed and there wouldn't be this um, huge, uh, you know, attempt to solve it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, I think it's just the facts and it's really important to put it down because five years from now, 10 years from now, you know, people's minds get foggy and people try to rewrite and, you know, rewrite history in a way that's not fact based. So it's really important to get this stuff down now in a way that's straight and forward. But it's also a great civics lesson, you know, and I don't care whether you're uh, a Bernie Sanders supporter or a Tea Party supporter, I, 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 all across the spectrum, people can read this book and look at these uh, these activists and these, uh, you know, just ordinary residents and see, you know, and, and, and take some pride in the fact that they wouldn't take the pat answers of government, uh, that everything was okay when their eyes and ears and everything else were telling them that there was a real problem here. So uh, this is the first book that I know of that's been out about the Flint water mm -hmm. crisis. Um, how did you say, gosh, you know, five months ago, we should make this a book? How did this all come into being? Well, actually, uh, Mission Point Press came to us. Um, they're a terrific uh, uh, small publisher uh, in northern Michigan, and they've done some great work before. And, uh, and, and you know, one of the great things about uh, the publishing press today is that as more facts develop, I mean, the story is not completely written. The story of Flint is not completely written. We'll be updating this book and republishing and republishing uh, and also have an e-book version as well so that people can use the timeline and, and, and make it more interactive and so forth and so that we can add 
to the evidence as these lawsuits and criminal investigations proceed. You know, um, at Detroit Public Television, we've done a lot of work with Bridge Magazine and, for, and with the Center for Michigan. And what I find really interesting is always the reporting that you're able to do in Chastity. I, I follow you in, in terms of what you're looking at and, and the stories on education. What are you specifically looking at in Flint next as this story continues? Well, at Bridge, what we do is we look at policy, but we look at policy through people's stories, through people's lives. So what I'll be, I cover cities for uh, Bridge and Urban Affairs. What I'll be doing is really focusing on the people of Flint. What are their stories and how are they reacting to the policy or lack of policy changes? And, and just get at the story more through people's lives. I think it's also interesting is following the money as well, David, um, and the, mm -hmm. uh, the amount of expenditures that's going to be coming from Flint and from the state level, too. In here, in this book, does it talk about, is it give people an idea of, of where money is coming from and how it's being used and, and everything there as well? You know, it's almost like you're at our story planning meeting because these are the very things that we're... <laughs> well, I was. No, I was kidding. <laughs> <laughs> these are the very things that, that we're talking about and, and, and some of our next steps as well. Um, you know, as we say, this is still an unfolding story. The people of Flint still can't uh, freely drink their water the way everyone else uh, does. Um, and one of the most fluid parts of the story, no pun intended, is, is the money, where it's coming from, how well it's being handled, how efficiently it's being spent, uh, and who are the gatekeepers for this. So um, I know the mayor has talked about, about it quite a bit, about it you know, it's still being too slow in coming, and, uh, and you know, Chastity's looking into you know, the sort of flagging support uh, that's coming from uh, the state and the media and so forth, and so th this is an ongoing story. So is it the thought that all of a sudden, if this keeps passing, people will start to lose interest, or is that what you're feeling, Chastity? From what I'm hearing from people in Flint, the, the donations and the attention was huge initially, a, a year ago, several months ago. But now that this is continuing, there's no solution and there's no date for when this will be fixed. People in the media and people in um, positions to donate money are sort of stepping back a little. There's a little Flint fatigue that's going on and mostly it's because there's no real end in sight. And uh, the people of Flint are saying, and the mayor of Flint is saying, look, this needs to continue to be something on everyone's front burner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's, it's, again, staggering to realize that there are people who are waking up this morning, they are not drinking from their taps. They are not showering from the water that is coming from their house. And that is, again, something that you have to step back and realize that is still happening in Flint. To the point of help, um, let me ask you, you do have on the book there on the front that some of the proceeds of the sale of the mm -hmm. book are going to be helping um, the Children's Fund in Flint. Right, the uh, Flint Child Health and Development uh, Fund in Flint. It was uh, co-founded by uh, Dr. Hannah uh, Atisha, and she is, of course, the the pediatrician who who first brought to public attention the rising lead levels uh, in children in, in a couple different neighborhoods. She's she's an unbelievably brave woman, and our, her and the Community Foundation in Greater Flint are behind this. And it's to it's an ongoing fund to help kids with their health issues that you know so many kids are going to have throughout the rest of their lives and they they've raised about eight million dollars so far and uh, they say they need 40 or 50 million uh, to make this uh, to make this work and so a portion of the book's proceeds are going to that fund all right and where can people find the book David people can find the book on Amazon so it's already up and uh, and uh, you know it, it's a it's a terrific uh, effort and uh, we hope people pay attention you know it might might be used in uh, in classrooms and uh, in colleges uh, around the country that is as the well. plan that is the plan to have it used uh, in classrooms and in you know government leadership uh, uh, classrooms as well at the university level all right David Seaman and Chastity Pratt Dawsey thanks so much for joining me Anytime. Thank you. okay Oh my gosh, it's always my pleasure. Oh, seriously, <laughs> that's great. I mean, no, I. Uh